welcome to my YouTube channel. I am so excited to be here and start creating content for you guys. I asked you guys to ask me personal questions as well as some piercing questions. So we are going to get on that today. But first, I would like to give a little introduction to myself since this is my first YouTube video. My name is Faith. I'm 23 years old. I am a mother of a toddler, a body piercer, and a roller skater. So I always start out with moisturizer. I use the Waleda sheer hydration okay so the first question is how did you get into piercing so this is actually a crazy story i was a phlebotomist where you learn how to draw blood just figured you know what the medical field is probably not for me if you do know me you know that i am not the professional type so <laughs> um that didn't really work out i moved out to texas from California and I started bartending, I just thought, you know, maybe piercing would be cool. I had a roommate out in California who was a piercer and she kind of guided me on some advice. And so when I was bartending, I would just like tell everyone who came in the bar, like, I wanna be a piercer, I wanna be a piercer. I was literally like verbally manifesting it without realizing that that's what I was doing. So I just kept saying like, I wanna be a piercer, I wanna be a piercer. Do you know anybody who needs piercers? Like, I wanna learn. And, uh, I said it to the right person at the right time at the bar who had a brother who worked in a tattoo shop. Shout out to my friend Chris. He got me in contact with them and I started my apprenticeship like two weeks after that. Um, next, I'm going to do the glass skin primer from Makeup Revolution. Because I like my skin, I like to look sweaty. I have dry, dry skin. The next question is, how do I find a reputable piercer? So there is a resource that you can use called safepiercing.org and you can click the find a member tab and there's people on there who have special um, qualifications in order to get on that list that make them reputable but it never hurts to ask a few questions like what material jewelry do you use make sure it's implant grade material what do you use to sterilize your jewelry make sure it is some sort of autoclave or statum of some sort ask them what their aftercare is like you know just just Ask a bunch of questions and if they're not willing to answer your questions and they're probably not the piercer for you, they should be very open with you about all of their procedures. It should not be a secret. There is no reason for it to be. Just ask lots of questions if you can't find a member near you. And even if you can, make sure you ask those questions. It's your right. So this person said, how did you find people to pierce when you were an apprentice? Um, honestly, I was just honest. Um, also, I'm using the e.l.f. concealer. This thing is cool. Um, I was just very honest with people. On, most people were very receptive. And then I, we also offered discounts on apprentice piercings. But like what I would tell people is like, hey, I'm an apprentice. This is my first time doing this piercing. Or I have never done this piercing before. Um, would you mind if I practice on you? It would really help me in my career. And obviously, like... If this doesn't work out and it doesn't go the way we want it to, like we'll give you another piercing or we'll have our my mentor do it or or whatever, you know. Just be honest with people. Don't try and fake it till you make it with this shit because it shows and um, people appreciate honesty. So that's how I found a lot of my clients at the beginning of my apprenticeship. And if you were one of my clients at the beginning of my apprenticeship and you're still here, thank you so much. I still have people coming to the shop who I've been piercing since the beginning. So thank you. I am going to do some eyeshadow. I have this new Morphe Pony Constellation Sky. She's cute. Um, I never know what I'm doing with my eyes. I honestly don't know how to do makeup, so I am not a makeup artist. Um, so just kind of bear with me here as I stumble my way through this eye look. Um, so this person asked, can you change a piercing when it's irritated? So. This is a very subjective question. Um, it really, it really depends on the situation. Um, and you know what? Some, a lot of piercers have like different opinions on this as well. So I'm just going to state my opinion on this. I think that if a piercing's irritated because of the jewelry, even if it's only been two or three days, you should change the jewelry because if if the jewelry is the cause of the irritation, then changing it is really gonna help your irritation. Now, if you got pierced reputably and you have good jewelry in and it's just a little angry, I would definitely wait until that irritation goes down. But if the irritation is being caused by the um, 
jewelry itself, I say change it. And some piercers don't agree with me there, but um, I've, I've found a lot of success with clients who come in with three week old piercings that are not doing very well because the quality of the jewelry isn't where it needs to be and we change it and then within a few days they're already feeling some relief. Definitely consult with your reputable piercer first about that though to see what works best for you. This does not apply to every situation all the time. Okay, so this person asked, how has becoming a mom shaped your outlook on life and business? So this is actually a really good question because becoming a mom chilled me out in a lot of ways. Um, if you follow me on Instagram, you've seen me kind of share a little bit of my life story and stuff. I was crazy. I was a stripper when I was 18, living very unconsciously um, with mental illness and stuff. Um, and then through my pregnancy, I kind of had a journey of one could say awakening. Um, maybe it was the world trying to tell me that I need to grow up and start taking some accountability. Becoming a mom has given me a sense of purpose and a sense of responsibility and someone to care and love. So that has changed my outlook that way. And it's also like kind of helped me realize that it's not just about me, you know, it's about her as well. So the decisions that I make will affect her in almost every way. And so that's actually kind of chilled me out because before I had no responsibility. So I was like, what are the consequences of these actions? And I was just doing the actions instead of thinking about how they could actually affect the people around me. Now that I have Sunny, my little girl, I, I definitely think a lot more. And being a mother has also motivated me to be able to provide for her and not have her worry about money and things like that while also teaching her to be humble. And it has also helped me stop caring about things that I don't need to care about. And on the same subject of motherhood, someone asked, can you still breastfeed after getting your nipples pierced? So there is also controversial information about this online as well. My advice is, when you find out you're pregnant, it's just easier to take those bad boys out. Your breast, speaking from personal experience, your breasts go through so many changes during pregnancy. You just, I mean, my boobs look totally different now than they did before pregnancy. And I'm glad that I waited six months after I breastfed to pierce my nipples for the first time. Um, I tell my clients to just remove them when we find out that they're pregnant. Uh, but other piercers may have other situations and rules, but I usually just advise people like it's not even worth it and yes you still can breastfeed after you have your nipples pierced it does not ruin your ability to breastfeed breastfeed is called breastfeeding not nipple feeding um, if you have flat or inverted nipples or things like that you can still breastfeed and piercing it will not affect it so get your nipples pierced and get them re-pierced after <laughs> you have a kid um, if you are breastfeeding though, I recommend a six month waiting period, period post breastfeeding to get your nipples pierced just because there are so many changes that happen. We want them to kind of go back to normal as much as possible um, before we pierce them. So this person asked, tell us your adoption story. So if you guys don't know, I was openly adopted at the age of, I believe it was four or five. So my mom had me very young. My mom had me at 16. She, you know, at 16, you don't really have a lot of options um, and a lot of resources. She was a single mom at the time. One of her really close friends, who is not my father, decided that he would step in as my father figure. Um, keep in mind, this man was 17 years old. So shout out to him and shout out to my mom for killing it, you know, being 16 years old and trying to make it by with the baby working at Waffle House. They tried to get back on their feet. Um, so until then, I lived with the man who I call my dad. Um, I lived with his family um, until I was about 12 and then I moved back in with my mom. So his family, who is my family, I mean, not by blood, but still my family, they actually took me in and treated me as their own and so did he. Um, so I'm very thankful for him and I'm very thankful for my mom who worked very hard to provide me a good life. We still, you know, we, are, we have a very good relationship and we are still on good terms, um, but I did live with my father's family who's not technically my blood family, but they, they raised me. So I was raised by his parents. So that's a very cool experience um, and it definitely taught me that it takes a village to raise a baby and that you can help people when they need to be helped and um, it's definitely give me a, a bigger heart for people in need because if they wouldn't have been there for me, I don't know where I would be. I would probably be out and addicted to drugs um, and if my mom didn't make the very hard decision of 
doing what's best for me and allowing other people to take care of me when she didn't really have the tools then to do it because she was 16. I, I respect her a lot for that because that's as a mother that is very hard to do and it was what was best for me. Um, and she fought really hard to make sure I had a good life once I moved back in with her. Um, you know, I was a troubled teen, obviously. I was a stripper, but <laughs> um, yeah. So that's my adoption story. I love my family. I love my mom. I love my dad. Um, and everybody treats me really well. And like, I am just one of their own. I don't feel like, it even feels weird to say that I was like adopted. Um, because it just does not feel that way. They did such a great job of making me feel like family. And even to this day, they are such big supporters. And my last name, Vincent, is actually that family's last name. Woohoo! I love talking about that. I love like bringing light to that because not a lot of people know that about me. Um, okay, so this person asked, for a conch, should you install a ring or a stud? I'm using the Fenty Beauty. I'm gonna forget to list all of these products to you guys. Excuse my ADHD, we're working with it here. If there's a product that I'm using that you wanna know, just ask in the comments and I'll answer. Can you use a ring or a stud for a conch piercing? So it really depends. If you want a super nice, snug fitting ring, you're gonna have to wait the full nine to 12 month heal time before you can install one of those. But if you're willing to compromise with a larger, chunkier ring that's a bigger in diameter to where when it's in the actual piercing, channel it's not curving it's actually straight because it's how large it is in diameter um, then you can install a, a conch but most people when they say they want a hoop they want it nice snug and thin and that's just not safe for an initial piercing it is not impossible to get pierced with the hoop with a conch but it does have to be large enough in diameter and it does have to be the proper hoop so it either has to be a seam ring um, with a design or decorative thing to keep the seam from going into the piercing channel or it needs to be a CBR, which is a captive bead ring. Clickers are not safe for um, initial piercings because the hinges on the clickers will cause irritation as they move back and forth through the piercing channel. So this person asked, how come you had to strip at 18? <laughs> this is such a funny story and I'm honestly glad that I finally have like the confidence to talk about it because I used to be like very ashamed of it but it was honestly such a formative part in my life and I'm not embarrassed about it anymore. I think that I did it because I was a hostess at a steakhouse. I just moved into my first apartment because I was 18, didn't live with my family out in California. I had moved out. And the first check I received was $300 and rent was due next week and rent was 700. So <laughs> uh, I was like, well, what's a way that I can make money quick and fast? And honestly, I thought stripping would be kind of fun. Like, I'm not gonna lie, I, th I thought it would be kind of interesting to do, but I guess I didn't think about the fact that you're not just on stage, you also had to like, interact with men and women and i just came to find out that that was not my forte i love performing obviously i'm a performer i love being on stage i love dancing it was it was super fun that part was fun that's why i started stripping because i needed to make some cash and i made it and i was only a dancer for about three months um when i found out it just was not the lifestyle for me um it wasn't fulfilling in the way that i needed it to be so i honestly lived pretty broke up until about april of last year this person asks, can I shower with a new piercing? Yes, please shower. You can shower with a new piercing. The only water that you need to like avoid with piercings is submerging underwater. So you can get it wet in the shower. And in fact, I encourage my clients to get it wet in the shower. Kind of let the hot water run over it. It really helps loosen up any crusties and stuff. Um, so yeah, you can get it wet in the shower, that's fine. The only thing you want to avoid is submerging underwater. Um, or going to bed with your hair wet with ear piercings and stuff because trapping that moisture in there is not very good. And just make sure you dry really well after a shower. Okay, so this one, I'm about to do my liner and I get so many questions about how do I do my eyeliner. I'm gonna try my best to show you guys, but I do it differently every time. I've been doing winged eyeliner since I was 15. I don't know how to do it. I don't have a tutorial. I forget that I have hooded eyes sometimes and don't do eyeliner for hooded eyes. So I'm gonna try really hard to do the eyeliner for hooded eyes for you guys and show you how to do it. I can't talk and do this. This is a very focused um, procedure here. So we're gonna try. I got the NYX Epic Ink Eyeliner. This is my favorite one that I've found over the years.
So I try really hard not to like go like this. That's an old habit of mine that I used to have because of my hooded eyes. So I try and look straight on and create the shape that I want. Oh wow, this is much harder <laughs> to do this on camera. And then I just kind of connect it. Oops. We love that. I'm honestly going to ignore that mistake that I made on my eyeliner and just pretend that it's an eyelash. You know, it's like I'm the Bob Ross of makeup. Just pretend that the blink that you did on your eyeliner was an eyelash. So we're gonna try and recreate this on this side, but it will never be recreated. It will never be the same, no matter what you do. So just try your best. And as I tell my clients with paired nostril piercings, Nobody's asymmetrical. We're gonna try as hard as we can to get them as lined up as we possibly can, but it's going to be very difficult. <laughs> and you really, when you're doing your eyeliner, you really wanna make sure that you look like you're a corpse with your mouth halfway open like this. <laughs> I don't know why, it's a trick, it's a hack. Oh, hey, I actually did a pretty decent-ish job of having the same shape. Sometimes these are two totally different shapes, but check it out. We love that, cute. Okay, so that was the part that I need to focus on the most so I could not get a question in there. Next question, are you in therapy? I know you guys see my stories on Instagram and you're like, damn, I hope this girl is in therapy. I'm in therapy. I use BetterHelp. Um, I'm, we're gonna get a promo code for BetterHelp one of these days, watch. Um, yeah, I use BetterHelp. It works really well for me. Um, I maybe do it like twice a month um, just to like check in and hold myself accountable and make sure that I'm not, you know, beating myself up too much um, or not beating myself up enough. So yeah, I am in therapy and I think Everybody needs to have a period in their life where they attend therapy and just kind of get an outside perspective. The only thing that I find skewed with therapy is they're only getting your perspective. They're not getting everyone else's perspective around you. So you can have a very skewed perception of yourself and your actions, which I know I used to have a lot. I think I've gotten very good at practicing like realizing when I'm in the wrong. Uh, but it used to be a very difficult thing for me to do. So therapy has really helped me like analyze it. And I really love CBT therapy, cognitive behavioral therapy. That really helped my brain. So this person asked, when can I stop cleaning my piercing? So as a piercer, I have to tell you never, but as a human, it's really subjective and really up to you. If you're noticing lots and lots of crusty still, if you're, Getting, if you have a very dirty job, like, you know, you should clean them every day with the saline. Just give them a quick wipe down with a paper towel and saline or a Q-tip and saline. You should clean them at least once a day, but you know, I usually, like once my piercings are nice and healed, I just let the hot water run over them in the shower if they're healed. If you're having a lot of irritation and stuff, you should definitely just keep cleaning them every day. Um, take good care of them. Now, there are some piercings that get pretty stinky, so if you have like a septum or something that smells, just keep that guy clean. Um, you don't necessarily have to do it forever. Um, as a piercer, I'm supposed to tell you that you should, but really, it's super subjective. It's up to you and the piercing that you have in the, in the, in the timeline of the healing process of it and the type of jewelry that you have in. All right, so we are gonna move on to a little contour here again. I have no idea what I am doing. So, I'm using the Kat Von D Shade and Light. I love this shit. it works so well. It works good with my skin tone as well. Um, so I try and put a little contour here. And I just throw that shit on there. Um, so the next question is, what is your trickiest piercing? Like, what's the one that stresses you out the most? Bridge piercings. Bridge piercings are these little guys right here. 
one, they're very anatomy dependent, and two, for some reason, mine always just come out too shallow, and so I'm not offering them right now until I get a little bit more practice into them. Um, yeah, I just have not had really good success with them. Also, vertical labrets give me like the heaps because I'm always scared I'm gonna go a little bit too shallow. Usually, most of the times when I mess up a piercing, it's either it's either too shallow or like septums, I sometimes can't get them as straight as I want them to be. So that's definitely a downfall. Um, and your piercer should definitely have some humility. If they mess up a piercing, they need to be honest with you. Because um, being honest with your clients just establishes trust and humility. Like I was saying about the apprenticeship thing, just be honest. Don't let somebody walk out with a piercing that you're not proud to stand behind. Um, so anytime I've messed up a piercing, I'm always like, hey, that was not my best work. Here are our options. Um, and we just kind of go over what we can do from there. It's really subjective and depending on the piercing. Do you mourn who you were before you had your baby? Absolutely fucking not. I do not miss that girl. She's a very damaged and hurt girl, but very unconscious. I don't miss her. Um, I'm glad I am not that person anymore. Um, having Sunny was one of the best things that could have ever happened to me. Made me a better human made me very selfless, uh, gave me something to just unconditionally love. Am I thankful for that person? Absolutely. That girl is strong as fuck and got through anything and she's still a part of my personality today. I have just picked the better parts, the determination and the drive that I had to just survive. And I think a lot of where my success comes from is I have you know, I, I just always pretend that I'm absolutely broke like I was when I was 18 and I needed to just figure it out. Um, so I think that's where a lot of my determination of work comes from is like, I don't ever want to go back to that place and absolutely no shade to my sex workers and stuff. A lot of people really can't handle that line of work. It's just not something that was for me. Um, if you're considering going into that line of work, just make sure you do a lot of research. Make sure you're aware of the contents of the job and what you're gonna have to be doing. And make sure you're going to therapy and taking care of yourself and not living unconsciously. Do I miss myself like from back in the day? Absolutely not. But it served me a purpose. And there are definitely times like as a mom where I kind of miss the freedom. Like there's a lot of times where I think like, I'm this successful with a kid, how much more successful could I have been without a child? But honestly, I make it work. Like I have scheduled my schedule around her schedule so that I can be up with her in the mornings and go to bed with her every night. Um, that's just a priority of mine. Now, if I didn't have a kid, I would just be working. So it's kind of good. She kind of like grounds me, keeps me humble and keeps me from overworking too much because my priority is to come home to her at night and put her down for bed and give her dinner and stuff. So um, I don't really miss my life pre-baby, um, not a lot. And really, I'm not a huge partier. I never really enjoyed it that much. I did it a lot, but it's not really a lifestyle that I miss. Yeah, I'm gonna finish off here with some dewy setting spray because I like to look like I've just ran a mile even though I didn't because I hate running. So I'm gonna finish this off and we'll close out. This stuff is amazing. Makes my makeup last all day. This is the Pixie Glow Mist. It's freaking great. Well, thank you guys so much for showing up to my very first YouTube video. I hope that this answers some of your questions and I hope that you guys got to get to know me a little bit better. Um, I'm really looking forward to making more content. Watch for some vlogs and we might be doing something really fun today. So keep an eye out. Thank you guys, love you.